Thanks for tuning in. This session is divided into three important parts. In the first part, we are going to develop a vulnerable Java application. In the second part, we are going to upload the vulnerable application to GitHub so that you guys can access the source code easily. In the third part of the session, we are going to use Spotbugs plugin with Eclipse IDE to find out security vulnerabilities in our source code. So let's get started with the first part. Let's create a new Java project. For that you need to click on the file menu, then new, and then Java project. So over here you have to provide some basic information like uh, project name. So let's get started with that. Since the purpose of this project is to demonstrate the Spotbugs plugin in Java, therefore we are going to write the code that is not 100% secure. It has uh, few vulnerabilities. So that is why I have named the project as vulnerable Java project. Let's click on the finish button and get started with the next step. Let's add a new class file. For that we have to right click on SRC folder then click on new and then class. We have to provide the basic information about this class. I have provided demo as the class name. Let's click on the finish button. As you can see, a blank class file has been generated. So let's get started and write some vulnerable code in it. I'm going to import some packages. Let's add some source code to our uh, demo class. Let's create the main method. Let's add a try catch block since we are going to have some database connectivity. So I'm adding standard lines for the database connectivity. Let's input the employee ID from the user. I'm creating a buffered reader and then I'm calling read line method to input a string and then store it to EMP ID parameter. Let's check if the EMP ID parameter is not in the proper format. We are going to produce an error message. Let's create a statement class since we have to execute some SQL statements and the statement that we are going to execute is select all from employees where the EMP ID matches with the user input. Then we are going to save the results in result set object. Let's see uh, how to print all the records that match our criteria. So we are going to use a while loop. We are going to call rs.next method that returns a true value if uh, a record exists and it returns a false value if there are no more records. So let's print employee ID, employee name and the department on console output. Since we are done with the code let's add the cache block and add an error message in case any exception occurs. So that's all the source code we need for this demonstration. Let's move forward. Let's see if our code is actually working. So I'm going to click on this uh, run demo button and see what happens. All right, so if you see at the bottom, it's asking for the employee ID and the format of employee ID is EMP and then 01 or 02 and so on. So it must print the data of uh, one of the employees. All right, so the source code is working perfectly fine. Now we will learn how to upload this source code to a GitHub repository so that we can share it with others. If you already know this, you can skip it and directly move to the static analysis part of the video. Let's move to the next part of the session and share this repository to the GitHub. So for that, we have to right click on the project and then click on team and then share project. Uh, let's create a new repository by clicking on the create button and let's provide a name. It's going to be vulnerable Java project and click on finish button. Let's click on the finish button now. As soon as you do that, you notice that a new repository has appeared in the Git repositories. If you don't see this view, it means the GitHub plugin is not installed. In order to do that, you need to click on the help and then click on Eclipse Marketplace and then search for the GitHub. 
if you scroll down you see this egit that is uh, git integration for Eclipse 5.8 so it's already installed in your case if it is not installed you might need to install this before you can create a repository alright so we don't need to install it right now let's cancel this and let's commit the code so that our uh, code is submitted to the github and it can be accessed online once it's committed for that we need to right click on the repository and then click on commit alright so these are uh, all the unstaged changes we have to select all these files let's do that and let's move them to the staged changes and let's enter a message for the commit so this is the first commit so let's call it first version now let's click on the commit button and then click on the push head button in order to fill in the information here we need to create a repository on github let's do that first we are going to upload this repository to github.com slash my demo apps let's create a new repository let's provide a name here I'm providing vulnerable Java project we can provide an optional description here I have provided some description so this is going to be a public repository and let's click on the create repository button alright the repository has been created let's copy this and then paste it to the Java Eclipse the host is going to be github.com and uh, my credentials are already stored in your case you'll be required to provide your own account information let's click on preview everything looks fine let's proceed let's click on the push button to finally push it to the github you can see the processing at the status bar in the bottom and we finally get this message the repository has been pushed successfully let's close this window alright so let's verify from the github if the source code has been submitted there alright you can see the first commit vulnerable java project is here and it says first version of the vulnerable java project if you're not willing to write this entire source code you can directly download it from github so here is the URL. If you want some guidelines on how to download a repository and then load it in Eclipse IDE, please refer to one of our previous videos. Before we move to the third part of the session, let me clarify one thing. In order to execute this code on your system, you must have MySQL database. And you will need to create a table containing three columns and you will also need to create a user but in order to understand how static analysis works you don't really need to execute this program so I executed this program just to make sure that my code was working properly so our focus is not on the execution of the code rather we are going to focus on security vulnerabilities so let's get started with the third part of the session in order to install the spot bugs plugin in Eclipse IDE you have to click on help then click on Eclipse Marketplace and then search for spot bugs. The spot bugs Eclipse plugin 3.1 shows up and as you can see it's already installed on my system so let's see how it works. You can see the bug explorer and the bug info tabs right here but if you don't see them on your computer you have to click on Windows show view and then click on others and then you have to move to the spot bugs and then enable these view we also need to take care of a couple of other things before we scan our repository so you have to click on the project then properties and then scroll down to spot bugs and make sure that all these uh, categories are enabled 
and you have to set a sensitivity score so in my case I have set it to 17 if I set it all the way to 20 so it's going to produce a lot of warnings which I don't want to uh, tackle right now so but you can play with it and see what works best for you also it allows you to run the uh, analysis automatically so this is going to be a good idea you will get warnings as soon as you write some vulnerable code so let's move ahead alright so in order to scan the source code with spot bugs you have to right click then move to spot bugs and then click on find bugs it's going to take some time depending on the size of the project alright so it has came up with five issues in our source code and let's see what they are all about if you move the mouse to this little icon here it shows two issues at this line so the first one is the use of hard-coded password and the second one is we haven't closed the connection so closing the connection is of course important and if you don't close there will be a resource which will not be utilized but it will still be allocated so in my opinion uh, they are very valid issues and of course we should rather we must tackle them let's move on and see what's going on in rest of the places so if you see this it says dereference the result of read line without null check so what that means is at this line we are checking whether the employee ID is in proper format or not but we haven't taken care of the one thing that is what if the employee ID is null what if the user does not enter anything when we try to take user input let's move on to the third one so it says we may fail to close the statement class of course it's related to the uh, first one in which we didn't close the connection so whenever we create uh, the statement object we have to close it after use so we did not do that of course it was uh, for the demonstration purpose so we must close the statement class and the connection class moving on this one is severe and this says uh, the demo dot main that is uh, the method name passes a non constant string to an execute or add batch method of an SQL statement so this line could potentially cause an SQL injection and let's execute the code and see how this injection works alright so it's asking for the employee ID it's asking for the employee ID and uh, let's assume I don't know the employee ID so I'll enter any random employee ID uh, for instance EMP00 then I'm going to close the apostrophe and then going to write a condition which always evaluates to be true uh, for instance or a equals to a and uh, please note down that we haven't provided the starting and the closing apostrophes because they are already hard coded in our source code so let's see what happens when we press enter so as you can see the data of all the employees in that table has been printed on the screen so Java didn't flag anything wrong with that the program was running properly so this is the benefit of static analysis so right away we, we knew with the help of spot bugs plugin that something is wrong at this line and uh, we have uh, with the help of very simple attack we have demonstrated that how SQL injection attack can occur at this line let's move forward and see how can we fix these issues with our source code so first of all I'm going to close the statement class and I'm going to close the connection so this is going to happen towards the end of the source code so right here let's close the statement first and then close the connection let's save this and see if some of the issues are gone since our project is being analyzed automatically so the number of bugs must be reduced so you can see right now there are three bugs instead of five another problem with this source code was that we didn't check whether the employee ID was null before we compared it with a substring let's add an if statement here EMP ID is not equal to null let's save the source code and see if another issue is gone alright the results have been updated and now we can see only two issues with this source code now let's move to the third one this this one is very important because it's causing an SQL injection so what I'm going to do is 
So I'm going to use a prepared statement instead of the statement class. So I'm going to comment out these two lines. Let's save this code and see if some other issues have been taken care of. Now we are left with only one issue. That is the use of hard-coded password for database connectivity. So this issue can be resolved by using some other forms of authentication. For instance, you might have an Active Directory and you can use the Active Directory for authentication. So in that case, we will not be required to provide the hard-coded username and password for database connectivity. So of course, this is beyond the scope of this video, so we are not going to fix this last error. However, we have taken care of rest of the issues. And I think you have now got the idea how the static analysis works with the Eclipse IDE. So that wraps up our session. So I believe now you got the idea how to use Spotbugs for static analysis as you write the source code. So the benefit of this approach is that the errors or security vulnerabilities are not propagated in your source code. You don't have to take care of these security problems when your source code is ready for deployment. So I strongly recommend all the developers use such plugins. So for Java, we have Spotbugs. For .NET developers, there is a plugin called ReSharper. And by using these plugins, you can ensure that the code that you're writing is not going to result in security breaches. If you have any questions, please post them down in the comments, and I'll be glad to get back to you. Thank you.